Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. In our last video, we took a look at a cart. Cart 1 coming with some initial velocity and a nice little red spring towards cart 2 and those that spring wasn't going to attach to cart 2 and we wanted to know what ha what was going on before and especially what was going on afterwards. And what we saw was that all the energy transferred from cart 1 to cart 2. Well, today I'd like to change that. I'd like to say that instead of cart one um, springing into cart two, we're going to remove this spring right here. And instead, we're going to put some big, I don't know, blobby little mass right here. And it's made of, it's made of clay. And so what's going to happen is cart one is going to go smashing into cart two. And they're going to leave, after the collision, they're going to leave as one unit. My question to you is, What's going to happen? Today, we're going to take a look at fully plastic collisions where two part, where two bodies smash into each other and then leave the collision as one body. We're going to try and understand what rules apply, what rules don't, and try and solve this mathematically. Now, let's start it off saying that both of these masses are exactly the same. Let's give it a go and, and, and see what we see. Now, our sum of energy, I'm going to say that l let's hold off on using that now because I have a suspicion that something weird is happening and that our energy is going to dissipate in some way. Could be wrong, but we'll let's see if we can solve this without using that equation. All right, so initially, before everything hits, this equation right here is still valid. We still have, and we're going to keep both masses the same. We still know that V naught is equal to the final velocity of one plus the final velocity of two, and that was simply based on our momentum not changing. There's no external forces. We know that the momentum is not changing. Now here's the interesting thing. I said that these two bodies are going to smash in together and they're going to leave with the same velocity. Well, if they leave at the same velocity, that means that the final velocity of one equals the final velocity of two. Of two. After all, they're stuck together. Now we can trivially solve this problem. We simply have two equations, two unknowns in a very simple way, and we see that the velocity of one equals v naught over two which also equals the velocity, the final velocity, of 2. All right, so we have a rather trivial solution. Well, this gets me to thinking as well. I wonder if we could have used our energy equation up here. What would have happened if we had tried using our energy equation? Well, let, let's take a look. We'll do this in red. And we have 1 half mass times v naught squared equals 1 half mass times the final velocity well, the final velocity is going to be v naught over 2 squared plus 1 half m, again, v naught over 2 squared. Remember, because vf2 is also v naught over 2. And I suppose technically, if we want to be correct, we're wondering, was energy conserved? Was the energy seen in motion conserved? Let's scroll down a little bit right to right there. And on the right hand, let's let's get rid of these halves and this m, half and this m, half and this m. The question is, v naught squared, does that equal, let's see, v naught over 2 squared would be uh, v naught squared over 4 plus v naught squared over 4. And we can see rather easily, gosh, I don't even have to do this next line, but I'll do it just for kicks. V naught squared does not equal V naught squared over 2. Energy was not conserved. Now, one might ask, why not? What happened? Well, remember up here, I said that it was a big purple blob. You know, another way that I could have easily said this is I said, all right, we're going to add a different spring. And this spring can be compressed. We're going to say that there's still this spring here. But what happens is this, special, this spring has a latch on it. And when the spring compresses, suddenly 
the latch clicks and it stays compressed. In other words, it's one of those springs you compress it and it stays compressed. And in addition, it's going to have like a little sticky thing right here. So it's going to stick. Now what happens? Let's think this through. V naught comes in, or I'm sorry, cart one comes in at speed V naught. It hits cart two and while it's compressing, these two carts are coming closer and closer together. They're sticking together because that's what the spring does. And then as soon as they're all the way stuck together, the spring is compressed all the way. And a normal spring, a normal conservation of energy, this spring then has all this energy. Remember, 1 half kx squared, it has all this energy, and it releases that energy, and it sends cart 2 shooting away, and cart 1 stays stationary. However, in this case, that doesn't happen. The spring latches shut. So all that energy in the spring, it doesn't get to be used. It's stuck in there somehow. And this, in fact, is what happens with plastic collisions. So here we see that there's a fair bit of energy which is lost. And in fact, we could find out how much energy was lost by just going through the energy equation. Say, you know, make some other term, U loss. And we'd see that a good deal of the energy was lost. In fact, this is normal for plastic collisions. Now, one thing that I'd like to do is our, our solution right here was trivial. It was too easy. I'd like to kind of take it up a notch and give you a chance to solve something different. So in red, I'm going to give you a couple new facts. I'm going to tell you that mass one is equal to double mass two. Now, take your time, put the video on pause, and see if you can identify what the final velocity is of both carts. I'll join us back in a minute in red to see if we can find the solution. Welcome back. Hopefully you came up with something that looked like this, where the velocity of the center of mass is two-thirds v naught, and of course the velocity of the center of mass is the same in the initial situation as it is after the collision. So this is also the final velocity of both carts. Now what happened here? We basically took the sum of the initial velocity and divided, or the initial velocity times the initial mass divided by the total mass. So we know that the initial velocity was v naught times m1, total mass is m1 plus m2, and then we substituted, um, you can either do either way, either substitute out m1 or m2. I chose to put everything in terms of m2, and I came with this final solution. Pretty simple, pretty trivial, but this is a fully plastic deformation. So in summary, what we see is that in plastic deformations, we do not see energy conserved. Instead, we need to use our understanding of our linear momentum that within that system, and remember I drew the, the system boundary in yellow so that there were no forces going through it. I knew that the momentum has to stay the same, which means the center of mass's velocity needs to be the same initially as it is finally. Now in our next video, we're going to explore what happens if the collision is not fully elastic and it's not fully plastic? In other words, pretty much every other collision out there. I look forward to seeing you then.